Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. Today I'm going to get a little bit gushy about Nintendo DS and Nintendo DS emulation. We're going to show you some technical aspects of making it run really great under EmuDeck via ESDE, via the Melon DS RetroArch plugin. Whew, that's a mouthful. And then we're going to look at one of my favorite games called Touchmaster. To me, Touchmaster is the epitome of touchscreen gaming. I'm a huge fan of, of little dopamine hit games. Like if you've ever played any of the old PopCat games like Big Money, you'll know that there's definitely some dopamine to be had in there. And unfortunately, if you want dopamine hits now, it's gonna cost you $4.99 every three days type thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Touchmaster was sort of the beginning of that. And I really wanna gush about that one. So in order for us to gush a little bit, we do need to go in and do some technical stuff. Now I do have a stylus. This stylus works great on the OLED model. It does not work great on the LCD model. And honestly, you may have to seriously do a, a heart to heart with yourself to decide whether or not you can live with touch gaming like the DS games seen here with the LCD model. I, I'm not trying to bring it down, love LCD. I got one sitting right over there. But my point is, is that the touch screen on the OLED is, has so much better polling, it makes this a completely different game. All right, so before we get started, I'm gonna go in and do some tweaking to the emulator. Because you can see here we have the two screens stacked on top of each other with a blow-up screen. And if I hit the right trigger, you can see I can toggle through various iterations of these two screens. But did you notice anything missing? Do one more time. No tape mode. Wouldn't tape mode be amazing for this? Because you could have two giant DS screens stacked on top of each other. And listen, I got big old man hands, so I can hold this thing no problem in tape mode. So let's go ahead and fix some of these things now. So we're gonna click in on the L3 and the R3. That's gonna bring us to the RetroArch menu, and this actually works for all RetroArch games. You're gonna head down to Core Options. This is the nerve center of what we're gonna be doing today. And as with anything in RetroArch, if you tamper with the settings, you're gonna tamper with it for every game. So to stop that, go into Manage Core Options, and then create a save game options. Now you can see right now it's using a generic one, Melon DS, right? So now that I've said use a save, it's gonna create a brand new save just for this game. This is a configuration save, not a, a save for uh, your scores and things like that. That's not a, it's not a game save, it is a save for the emulator for that game. Hopefully that makes sense. Now there's two areas we're gonna monkey with today. There's obviously tons of stuff you could monkey with here, but we're gonna go into video first, you can see it defaults to software, but OpenGL supports more scaling and resolution of 3D graphics, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna go ahead and change to OpenGL, which gives us a whole bunch more options, by the way. And we can change our internal resolution to something really, really high. Now you guys know that if you render high internally and then display it on a smaller screen, it looks better. I don't wanna get too deep into the minutia here. And then we're gonna change our screen filtering to linear. It says right here, linear is smooth scaling. If you don't have any filtering, then the graphics may look blocky. Well, we want the smooth scaling. All right, so that's all we have to do here. And then we run up to screen and you can see all the layouts. Well, unfortunately, there's this is all the layouts we saw and the one we're looking for, which would be tape mode or portrait, isn't here. So I'm gonna take this top one, layout number one, I'm gonna select it. And then I'm gonna go down here where it says left and right, rotated left and right. So if you rotate it left, I think it'll go this way. If you rotate it right, it'll go this way. So I want rotate right. All right, so now I've got rotated right. That does both screens side by side. And you'll see that in just a minute, how well it works. And we're done. Now remember, everything we just changed is only for Touchmaster, this version of Touchmaster. No other game will get those uh, items. Then we're gonna go back. If you hit resume, it's just gonna crash. I don't know if it's the, the emulator core or what, but it will hang. So just hit restart. Hey, what's this? What's this? Yes, yes, now we're talking. We have tape mode version of Touchmaster using the, the most screen real estate possible, using the best rendering possible. All right, so now it's time. We've, that's the technical aspect. If that's all you wanted to see, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, out the door with you. Now, let's talk about Touchmaster. I love this game, and I recently fell back in love with it after I put it on my deck here. Um, it is... This, these are bar games. And when I say bar games, I mean Touchmaster originated as a touchscreen gaming system 
for bars and pubs. So you go sit at the counter, you go up to the bar, sit down, get a drink, and there's a big giant box with a screen on it. And it was probably called Touchmaster 3000, 4000, 8000. They always had a thousand in there for different versions. But Touchmaster is sort of a culmination of a lot of the different games that are on there. Now, this version of Touchmaster has 23 games. Touchmaster 2, I think, has 22. And uh, Touchmaster 3, which, by the way, is the weakest of the set, uh, has 20 games. Still a pretty good value. But I don't know. The original Touchmaster really is where it is for me. So let's take a look here. Um, these are my favorites, and I don't remember how I designated said favorites, but I don't think Three Peak Deluxe was one of my favorites. Maybe it has to do with how much you play them. I certainly didn't play Crystal Balls. But let's look at the three main categories. Cards. Target 21 is the game we're going to see today. And there are tons more card games, including things like Solitaire, right? Power Cell. Things that you would probably recognize. Games of Skill, which tend to be uh, more arcade-ish style games like Hot Hoops. And we're going to look at that today. Somehow, like trivia and word search are in here. I guess trivia would be skill. Word search, eh, I probably would have put that under puzzle. Speaking of puzzle, you have Maki, Crystal Balls. These are all the games from that category. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the best, the best of the game is this Maki. It's very, very addictive. If you ever played Pop Caps Big Money, same game. I don't know who's I don't know who stole fizzy lifting drinks from whom, but they did. All right. So let's start off with um, Let's start off with uh, Target 21. Okay, so remember, if this were the DS, this would be the only screen that's touch capable. So they're gonna use this screen for other stuff. Now, Target 21 is pretty simple. Build stacks of cards to reach 21, sort of like uh, Blackjack. The more of them you fill with 21, the bigger your score is, right? And the higher your score, the more likely you are to get another game. Remember, you're putting quarters into this on the tabletop, right? So they want they want to keep you playing and keep you putting money in. So the better you do, the longer you get to play, which makes sense. Um, now, if you manage to get five cards, if let's say you get five I don't know, twos and threes in here, that won't equal 21, but because you fill the entire slot, you automatically get 21. You may see that or you may not. And you can skip through the cards as you get, here, let's just play. It's just easier than that. Now, remember, all of these games are on a time limit, right? That's, again, because they want you to put more money in. So they left that time piece in here. So in this case, I got a six. I'm going to slough that. I'm going to slough that. I'm going to slough that. Okay, I got an ace. That's a good basis for a 21. Bing. I uh, can't slough the eight there. I can slough the three there. That's fine. Give me 20. A 10. Nine for 17, uh, do I want a slough pile or do I just want to make this 20 and hope for a couple more aces? Let's do that. I'm out of slough, so 15, uh, 22, I gotta have to slough or I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip. Eight, nope. Queen, yeah, I'll take that. A king, uh, gross. I don't have any way to play it. I'm gonna skip it. Oh, there's my ace, boom. There's a seven. I didn't do very well, I only got like 97 points. Fortunately, you get three rounds. That was not a good round. I, I've recorded this two or three times, and the last one was absolutely crazy. I got so much stuff. Okay, there we go, that's good, 11. Uh, ace, 21. Uh, slough pile, 21. Slough pile, slough pile, slough pile. Now see, if I could get anything else in here, I'll get an automatic 21. Uh, nine, uh, I guess I'll take the 20. Eight, three. There, I filled up the whole column, so I got an automatic 21. 16, okay, I'm gonna have to skip, skip. There's a two, okay, two. So see, you hear that, ooh! That means I got just got on the top tier, so I'm gonna get a bonus for this, an extra, a, extra round. Unfortunately, I can't play the six. I'm hoping for an ace for one of those two columns, but I didn't get it. But look at that. See, they play the music, they run the little fireworks. It's all this little dopamine stuff, I love it. So let's do this last round. 10, 10, king, nine's fine, king, four. Oh, there's an ace, we'll fill that one out. 15, 18, I should be able to get one more small card in there. I'm gonna have to build another slough hand here. Uh, there you go, see? Uh, skip, perfect. Got a two, I'm gonna skip that. There's a queen, I'm gonna have to take it. Up, oh, see? Ooh. All right, uh, hope for an ace, didn't get it. There you go. It's a great game. I mean, 
I know it seems really simple and stupid, but believe me, you'll look up at the clock and like two hours has gone by. It'll make you crazy. Oh, and I got a high score. I'm just enter my name as player one. Neat, right? Let's go back. We'll look at two. We'll look at a total of three games, each one from a sort of a different category. Hot Hoops is great. Now, I'm going to probably do very poorly, and I apologize in advance. Get that hair off of there. What is that? Get out of, get out of there. So this is like an arcade hoop shoot, and the more consecutive baskets you make by tapping these guys, the higher your score. All right, this, is, this, is, this doesn't require a ton of explanation here. I got so good at this on the DS, it was almost criminal. But it's not going to happen today. Saying I'm already, I'm already screwing it up. Oh, by the way, you're on a time limit. Bricked. There you go. If you can get a certain number in a row, you go on fire. And you get fire hoops, which are worth more points. So how long can you keep the fire hoops up? Obviously that long. There's a little bonus target for you to hit. I love that stuff. It reminds me of like Raw Thrills games. And obviously, if you get a nice momentum going, you'll do very, very well. So, but it's a lot more, again, it's a lot more fun than you, it'll look just here. I mean, I don't want to sit here and talk about the whole thing, because we still have Maki to look at. And here is Maki. What is it? You know, it's Arizona, man. The dust and, and stuff is just unbelievable. So, again, if you've ever played Pop Caps, uh, Big Money, it's the same idea. The idea is, is you tap a color and all of the surrounding colors that are touching it will disappear. These will all slide and you're trying to get rid of all of them. We'll make this quick. All right. So you have like one free tile change or you have a tile change that if you don't like the tiles that you're looking at, I kind of like the, the basic stuff. And you have one free jumble. Now again, you're on a time limit. So you see this big chunk of blue in here. If I were to, if I were to double tap that, I would get a certain amount of points. Now, if I'm clever and I find a way to join more blues together, it's not gonna work out like I'd hoped, is it? There we go. So now I've got more blues together than I did before. Let's see, maybe I can work this in. Nah. Okay, well, that's better, but I could jumble and hope for the best. Ew, this sucks. All right, I'll take as much of the blue as I can get here. Obviously, the more you get, the more oohs and ahs happen. That was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. Whatever. Double, you have to double, double tap it, double tap it. Now, see, every time you clear one, look at that. The little rockets and the, I'm telling you, the, the dopamine makes me crazy. It's so great. All right, so it realized I had no more moves and it used my jumble for me automatically. This is still not gonna go as well as I'd hoped. But this was my free round, right? So normally you would have to clear a certain percentage in order to get to keep playing, but you get one for free. Now you see that I have to get a certain score or certain uh, whatever, and then you need a certain percentage. And see, I cleared 95, I needed 94, I get to keep playing. That's the idea. All right, you get the idea. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed looking at this. Um, I'm a huge fan of Touchmaster. I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo DS. And uh, I hope if, uh, even if you're, you know, of the younger generation and um, you're more about the 3DS and the Switch and all that, go back, this catalog is huge. There's a huge catalog of Nintendo DS games I only have a few here. I have some of my favorites, like Soul Bubbles is a game you've never heard of, but it's absolutely amazing. There's uh, drawing-centric games like um, Pack Picks or uh, Pack and Roll, where you actually use the stylus. I've, I've showed videos on that one. Of course, uh, oops, Elite Beat Agents, naturally, is one that's very popular, along with its original Japanese version of a Wendon. There are so many different... Listen, the DS is, is a huge library. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's fantastic. Listen, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. What did you like? What did you not like? Would you like to see more dedicated uh, emulation videos in the future like this? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? I try to read every single comment. Listen, thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane Armand Rowe. Until next time, take care.